thank you, the sun shining over Indianapolis. And a look at one of the most famous and iconic sports stadiums in the world, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where today some 300,000 people will gather to watch the 100-second running of the Indianapolis 500-mile race. The traditions are many at this speedway, including the drinking of milk and the kissing of bricks by the winner at the end of the great race. And hello from the speedway, Alan Bestrup with the 1998 winner, Eddie Cheever, and two-time runner-up, Scott Goodyear. Most of us love to go for a Sunday drive in a new car. Today, 33 drivers will go for a 500-mile drive in a new car at better than 200 miles an hour. But this car is different and will make the race more challenging for the drivers. Why, Scott? Well, this new car has reduced aerodynamic downforce. That means the cars have less grip, so the drivers are sliding around. Even the veterans are saying this is the most difficult car that they've ever had to contend with. Teams up and down pit road right now are trying to really figure out how they're going to manage 500 miles here. So for me, I'm glad that I'm retired and eating the television <laughs> booth, so I don't have to be out in the racetrack. Uh, now, he just, he just gave some bad news for the drivers. He just described the car that is not fit to drive. A new car that they designed with less aerodynamic downforce. Does it make any sense? Does it make any sense? Best with the 1998 winner. Listen again. Today, 33 drivers will go for a 500 mile drive in a new car at better than 200 miles an hour. But this car is different and will make the race more challenging for the drivers. Why, Scott? Well, this new car has reduced aerodynamic downforce. A new car has reduced aerodynamic downforce. That's dangerous. Those cars have to have downforce. They're going over 200 miles an hour, upwards of 230 miles an hour with, with less downforce. They're trying to uh, create accidents. That means the cars have less grip, so the drive Less grip. Yeah, my take on this at the time, these, these uh, pre-game or pre-race commentators, I believe that they were staging a scenario for multiple wrecks, but as it turns out, it wasn't as many wrecks. They kind of did a head fake on me. And sliding around. Probably looking at tragedy. Saying this is the most difficult car. Yeah, I thought they were staging the scenario for tragedy to fake a, a, a death on for Memorial Day just for dramatic effect. But again, as it turns out, I was wrong. But they did something else a little sneaky. They've ever had to contend with. Teams up and down pit road right now are trying to really figure out how they're going to manage 500 miles here. So for me, I'm glad that I'm retired and eating television food, <laughs> so I don't have to be out in the racetrack. Uh, for drivers, they're going to work really hard with this new car. And add on top of that, the degree of difficulty, Factored by the heat. This geoengineering made it hot today, made it way too hot. Hottest Indian, Indianapolis uh, Speedway. The Indianapolis 500 race in history would be the hottest. I guess that's what they're saying. Could be the hottest Indianapolis 500 ever. What does that mean for the drivers? Every time I race, when it got above 80 degrees, it became a problem because if you hadn't trained enough, you were going to get dehydrated. And you were See, the average high in Indy, I think, in late May would be maybe 80. Our upper 70s. 80 degrees. Almost probably in the, the 70s. It became a problem because if you hadn't trained enough, you were going to get dehydrated and you were going to lose your concentration. That's just from the driver's perspective and the crew chief's perspective. But for the cars, heat is an enemy. Everything doesn't work as well and the track gets really slippery. And again, the physical endurance. These cars have no power steering. So for the drivers to go 200 laps, four corners, 230 miles an hour in the hot weather with no power steering. And with less downforce by design. By less downforce by design. Uh, again, I was I wanted to reiterate before I move to the next clip. The, the post... Uh, the pre-race um, commentators were really setting up a scenario, you know, to, to give this uh, understanding that this was going to be a, a more than usual difficult task for these drivers. And how are they going to get through all, you know, the, you know, the heat factor and the fact that the manufacturers of these cars deliberately you know, gave them a car that's going to be tougher to handle. And why is that even acceptable? How is it that the Indy industry, uh, Indy car industry, accepted that setup for the new cars? We'll see. It, the 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 punchline's coming right up.
Indianapolis 500 winner for 2018, Chicken Prize. You know, one constant in ABC's coverage of the race over these past 54 years has been, it's not about us, it's about the people in the race. And so we leave you with a very simple thank you for watching and a celebration of all the traditions that are the Indianapolis 500 and all the joy that comes with winning the greatest spectacle in racing. That was done today by Will Power. Yeah, it, as it turns out, they did a little head fake on me. Um, the people who staged this um, event decided not to go with a, uh, a staged tragedy. It wasn't nearly as many accidents as I anticipated. I think there was only seven cars that got wiped out, but ironically, or, or probably this was done purposely, the very first car to be wiped out that, that Indy uh, race of 2018 was the car number 33. So, as it turns out, again, the whole sign-up was, you know, we, it, they overcame the adversity that we put upon them by designing their cars with less downforce through willpower. Willpower overcame the, uh, the adversity that was inflicted upon them. What a joke. Willpower. And, it, and there was never a comment made during the uh, the post the post race coverage about the uh, the irony of his name, Will Power. If fans are buying into this as it being real, then that is not good. This is, in my opinion, so obviously staged, in, and it's obviously staged in that um, the whole Will Power message and the. Uh, the, the pre-race commentators made it clear that um, the difficulties were basically inflicted on the drivers by the manufacturers. You know, here's the hidden message of Agenda 21. The message of Agenda 21 is that the citizens need to be prepared for the onslaught of difficulties that will be inflicted upon you by the system, the system of Babylon. So the only way you're going to overcome it, you have to have willpower. If you're going to survive our, our world of affliction, you must have willpower. That's basically what this message is. You know, I don't even think that's a stretch at all. I think that that was the PSYOP of the Indy 500 2018. And that's my take on it. And that's all I got on this on this video.